Hey there, fellow soldiers, and welcome back to another edition of Appropriate in the Culture. On today's episode, we're continuing with our awkward conversations. This is awkward. By discussing porn, pornography, pornographic images. Just play the song. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yep, it's going to be one of those episodes. So clear those browser histories, slip into incognito mode, and join me for an awkward conversation. This is awkward. About pornography. Parental warning, some content may not be suitable for children. I'm Pastor Shane. I'll be your adult entertainment filter today as we appropriate some culture. Our culture clearly has an unhealthy obsession with watching naked strangers fornicate. The pervasiveness and use of pornography is readily apparent to us and confirmed by nearly every study and data metric that we have. A 2018 study on people ages 18 to 35 found that 73% of women and 98% of men engage with internet porn within the previous six months. According to a report on 60 Minutes, Americans spend somewhere around $10 billion a year on adult entertainment products. And major hotel chains like Hilton, Marriott, Hyatt, Sheridan, Sheraton and Holiday Inn say that most of their in-room profits are from the sale of pay-per-view porn with half of all guests purchasing erotic videos. According to a study by the Barna Group, 43% of teens seek out porn at least monthly, 57% of young adults aged 18 to 24 seek out porn at least monthly, while 45% of adult adults ages 25 to 30 seek out porn monthly. The study also found porn use is on the rise among young women and that 14% of senior pastors surveyed currently struggle with using porn, which is surprising. It doesn't seem that hard to use. I might have misread the poll. The point is pornography is everywhere and Christians and non-Christians alike are heavily wrapped up in it. But we all knew that already and we all know it's wrong. Unlike with other sexual sins, there's no real pretense that pornography is virtuous. Homosexuality is celebrated and things like premarital sex are viewed as good and healthy expressions of love in our culture. Pornography really doesn't get the same treatment. Now, of course, there are certain segments of our society that don't just tolerate or normalize pornography, but do actually champion it. But honestly, that's not the most common. More commonly, even where people do not morally object to it, where it might be permissible, it is still, at its best, an embarrassing thing. Premarital sex and the like can be construed as virtuous because at least it's an expression of some semblance of a relationship. It's not the proper expression of sex, but it's nearer to it. You know, our, our hearts might be dark, our consciences might be seared, we might use porn, we might watch porn, but still, very few of us find it actually praiseworthy. Even if our culture doesn't condemn it outright, we're still kind of skeeved out by it and embarrassed by it. And that's at least closer to the truth because the Bible regards it as sin. Now, just like we saw last week in regards to premarital sex, the Bible doesn't talk explicitly about pornography, but there is a clear condemnation. Jesus says in Matthew, But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Engagement with pornography is manifestly a lustful act, and lust is repeatedly and consistently characterized as sin in the Bible. It says in 1 John, For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. Colossians, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Ephesians, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. Well, we know what they do in secret, and it's gross, and it's sinful. Now, I'm sure some of you are saying, wait a darn minute there, critically acclaimed author Nathan Shane Miller. How can you condemn pornography as sinful? Didn't you say that sin is not external? I don't recall that. The scriptures are clear and emphatic. Sin is not external. Sin is not external. Sin is not external, but sin is not external. Again, as we have repeatedly stated, sin is not external. As we've said a thousand times at this point, sin is not external. All right, you caught me. But I stand by that. 
what is being condemned in Scripture is lust. And lust is a condition of the heart. It's not a condition of the eyes. But the uniqueness of pornography as broadly being condemnable is due to the fact that the entire enterprise, from start to finish, its entire reason for existence is to elicit lust and to serve the desires of lust. That's its entire purpose. So it's hard to see how one would engage with pornography in a way that wasn't centered or motivated by lust. However, the principle still stands. Sin is not external. And yes, even when it comes to pornography. How is that possible? Well, let's go back to the Barna study. It said this, Exposure to porn apparently increases in the teenage years. Even if they aren't actively seeking pornography, 8% of teens responded to the survey say they encounter it daily, an additional 21% encounter it weekly, and another 21% encounter it at least once a month. Among young adults, 16% come across porn daily, an additional 32% weekly, and another 23% monthly. So that's dealing with the pervasiveness of porn, and that does happen. People can accidentally be exposed to it. it kind of happened to me the other day. I did an image search for a chastity belt, and some things popped up that were not chaste. Sort of the opposite, actually. So was that sin? Did I accidentally stumble into sin on my church computer, no less? I don't think so. Uh, but if so, it's because of this, not this. Because sin is not external. But let's push this further. Uh, maybe you can accidentally, unintentionally see some porn, and that's not sin. But can you deliberately and intentionally look at pornographic images and not sin? I think the surprising answer is sin is not external. For instance, uh, pornography has at various times and in various ways been outlawed in this country, including today. There's pornography that is banned. So when law enforcement arrests a person for possession or dissemination of pornography, how do they know that it's pornographic material? They have to look at it. That's the evidence of the crime. Someone somewhere in law enforcement has to examine the evidence. Even in our fancy schmancy CSI world, law enforcement has to examine the evidence. And prosecutors have to review the evidence. And even jurors have to see at least some, even if it's somewhat redacted, they have to still see some of the evidence. Intentionally, deliberately, viewing, pornographic images. Are they all sinning? I don't think so. Why? Say it with me. Sin is not external. It's not what comes into our eyes deliberately or otherwise. It's what comes out of our heart that matters. It's our response to it that is sinful or not. But again, the fact remains that the sole purpose and intention of pornography is to elicit and promote lust. It is sinfully made, it is sinfully promoted, and it is unquestionably used in sin. That's the default. And so the broad stroke condemnation of it is justifiable. And we know it. We, we all know the, all the ways in which it's sinful, and because it's sinful, it's also harmful. There's no shortage of studies chronicling the harms of pornography. Studies have found that married men who are involved in pornography feel less satisfied with their conjugal relations and less emotionally attached to their wives. Other studies indicate that those who watch porn had more affairs and were more likely to pay for sex. Other evidence suggested that watching porn is associated with a seven-fold increase in the likelihood of having Having casual sex. Watching could also shrink parts of the brain. A 2014 study out of Berlin looked at the brains of more than 60 men while they looked at pornographic images and quizzed them on their porn watching habits. They found that the part of the brain that makes up the reward system was smaller in those who watched a lot of porn. There's also a lot of data about the addictive nature of pornography, and anecdotally you see that. A truck driver crashed his semi, killing a man because he was watching porn. Jeffrey Tubin was caught doing things on a Zoom work call for which he was fired by the New Yorker and then hired by CNN. That's crazy addict-like behavior. But wait, there's more. Not only is porn harmful to those who watch it, it's also harmful to those who make it. I know, we're all shocked. A UCLA study found that 10.3% of performers, 75% of whom were women, were physically hurt during a film shoot. Nearly 14% of performers performed a sex act they did not want to do. Additionally, 23.7% said they had gonorrhea or chlamydia. And one third of performers had used a drug besides marijuana in the prior three months. Nearly 59% of respondents had used marijuana in the three months prior to the study. 
because you have to get altered in order to make it through the workday. Uh, porn is bad for those who are in it. And so in all ways, it should be avoided. And speaking of avoiding it, Appropriate in the Culture is brought to you by any internet porn blocker ever. If you have a problem with porn, what are you waiting for? Act now. Get any internet porn blocker ever. Just do it. Any internet porn blocker ever keeps out 100% of harmful pornographic sites and 97% of CNN. Alrighty, so I really don't like talking about this issue because what's there to say? We know. We all know it's wrong. We all know it's sinful. We all know it harms those who watch it. We all know it harms those who make it. We know. And yet, we still engage with porn anyway. You know, G.K. Chesterton had a good quote here. He said, Pornography is not a thing to be argued about with one's intellect, but to be stamped on with one's heel. We know, we know, we know, we know, we know, but we don't stamp it out, even as Christians. You know, if you're steeped in porn, here's the answer. Stop it. You can just stop. Yes, you can. With God's help, you can simply stop it. Well, that's too simplistic. You know, you, you don't understand the nuances of addiction. It is far more complex of an issue. No, pornography is not a thing to be argued about with one's intellect, but to be stamped on with one's heel. Look, there's grace. There's forgiveness. And you're hardly alone with the issue. But if this is your battle... It's time to stamp it out. If you need help, there's help. Get some. There's tools to help protect you. Use them. There's support groups. Join them. Whatever it takes to stop it. Less talking, more stamping. Well, that'll do for today. If you like what we're doing here, be sure to like, share, and review. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Locals. Send in your comments. I always love reading those. And I'll see you back here again next week for more Appropriate in the Culture.